This video is sponsored by TrueFire. Learn, practice and play with TrueFire. More on that later. So if you guys are here, that means that you really want to learn R&B and Neo Soul guitar, that you really want to get into all of the colors, all of the nuances and the source of this style. And today we're gonna do exactly that because we are gonna learn three different ways to play a Neo Soul lick on electric guitar. And we are gonna explain everything about it. We are gonna explain all of the chord shapes and inversions and degrees. We are also going to touch on the music theory behind them. And we are gonna understand how you can replicate these licks so that you can use them anytime you want. Let's start by picking a key. And today we are gonna use a minor key, the key of C minor. And we are actually gonna stay on the one chord only. So only on the C minor chord. This is obviously going to be a C minor 7 because you know guys that in this style we like to use 7th chords. So C minor 7 is the only chord we need but we are going to play it in many ways because this lick that we are going to learn will be a chordal lick which means that it uses chord positions together with melodies, together with single notes. So the C minor 7 is made by 4 notes, C, E flat, G and B flat. Okay. This is also known as the C minus 7 arpeggio. And if we remove the note C and you only look at these three, E flat, G, B flat, you may realize that this is also the E flat major triad because E flat is the relative major of C minor. So all of these inversions will also work as E flat major inversions. So in other lessons, guys, I showed you how you can add some interesting colors to this C minus 7 by extending it to the ninth, getting a C minor 9, or to the 11th, getting a C minor 11. And you'll see how some of the chords and colors and uh, positions in this lick will actually bring you back to these two colors, the 9th and the 11th, which really define the type of feeling that we want to have when we play this C minor 7. And once you play this basic bar chord position coming from the A shape of the caged system, you can immediately spot that your pink is free to play some embellishments, in other words, some hammer-ons on the first and the second string, doing these type of hammer-ons, generating these type of embellishments, touching on the 11th and the flat 7 of this chord. Okay. You can also play another hammer-on with the second finger, and this time that's between the, the ninth, the D note, and the E flat to the minor third. And maybe combine it with one of those hammer-ons with a pinky. So several hammer-ons are actually available around this position. And we're gonna start from this. We're gonna start from this type of melody. Na, 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 na. So that's D, E flat, G, B flat this after strumming the chord. From here we are gonna move to an inversion, the first inversion that we'll see today which is gonna be a C minor 9 and this is something that I call the Neo Soul move because it's very common and I show it very often on the channel and it goes like this. So I'm essentially barring the 8th fret on the bottom 4 strings this way and this is literally just an inversion B flat E flat G C and I'm then adding another finger to play the note D and in this way I'm replacing C which is the root and I'm playing my C minor 9 okay so that's a C minor 7 extended to the major 9th which is the note D which we were actually starting from when we were doing that first hammer on with over 2 million users worldwide whether you are a beginner, an intermediate, or an advanced player, TrueFire has lessons to enhance your playing. On TrueFire, you can find lessons of all styles to get you inspired. Get 30% of courses using the promo code BEATER30. Or like I do, sign up for the All Access Pass to use the entire TrueFire catalogue. I love TrueFire. Give it a go, and I think you'll love it too. 
I want to thank Truefire for supporting this channel and make this video possible. And now let's get back to the lesson. So, so far we get this. Now from this minor nine position, we are going to move to another interesting four string voicing, which is going to be this one. Now to really understand why I'm using this and I'm saying that we are still playing a C minor, we need to analyze which notes we are playing. We are playing C, F, B flat and another F. So in other words, if we consider this to be a C, that's the root, the 4th or 11th, the flat 7, and again the 4th or 11th. So I think of it, but it's not the only way to think around this, but I think of this as a C minor 7 extended to the 11th, like this one, okay? But we are playing it without the 3rd and without the 5th, so it is an omit 3 and an omit 5. And it sounds really cool to me. But you can also think about this as a part of the G minor 7 chord that you guys all know, it's just a bucket. This is the 5 in the key of C minor, and if you only play this, you're actually playing a G minor 11. So that's completely up to you. But like we said, let's think about this lick that we're learning today as based around one chord, C minor 7. So think of this as a C minor 11, obviously without the third and without the fifth. So what I like to do with these two positions, minor nine and minor 11, is going kind of like back and forth between the two, creating an inner melody into the positions that I'm playing. For me, it's really like singing, but having the chord underneath to really support with the harmony, the melody that we are creating. So, so far we can get something like this. Or when I do this, I'm literally just repeating a couple of extra times the top note D. It's a single note that I'm picking. Okay. In this first way of playing this lick, I want to finish on another interesting inversion. This time this is going to be a second inversion. Now a second inversion, guys, means that you play the fifth in the bass. So I need a G in the bass and around here a G is here. And I like to play this position. I really love this sound, it's one of my favorite chords. So once more, let's analyze all of the single notes that we are playing. Okay, so we're playing a G in the bass, then we're playing the note E flat, then we're playing the note F, B flat, and then if you want to include the first string, we'll see that we have uh, the chance to include it or to avoid it, we are also playing the note D. So we have G fifth in the bass, second inversion, then we have E flat, minor third, F, the eleventh, B flat, the flat seven, and then if you like D, which is the ninth. So this could be, depending on whether you play the first string or not, a C minor 11, if you're playing this, so without the first string, or a C minor 9 11, if you're also including the D as your top note, because D is your ninth. But you may have realized that we don't have the root. And this is absolutely fine, because what we are playing here is a rootless position, a rootless inversion, okay, of a C minor 7. So this is a C minor 11 or C minor 9 11 over G, so second inversion, rootless. But the notes that we are using at the end of the day are the same notes that we were already using here and here. So we are kind of like combining them into one position like this. And if this is now the ending of the first way to play this lick, let's have a look at the full lick, version 1. This version has the B flat as your top note, so this is just a C minor 11. If I want to have the note D, so this is now my top note, it goes like this. I will just strum until the first string to get this instead of this as my top note. Okay. So now let's get into the second way of playing the same lick. We're gonna start from a triad this time and it's going to be B flat triad. Now you can think about this B flat triad as a chord that actually belongs to the key of C minor. That's the flat seven chord, okay? 
or you can think of it as single notes. And if we analyze a B-flat triad, which is made by the notes B-flat, D, F, okay, these are the flat seven, the ninth, and the eleventh of a C minor 11. So it's like saying I wanted to extend, you know, my chord to the C minor 9, 11, so 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, but I'm only playing the last three degrees, 7, flat 7 obviously, 9, 11, and this generates a B flat triad. So in other words, the B flat triad is actually the upper part of a C minor 11, okay, and that's exactly what we are playing here, and that's why I keep saying that the whole lick is based around one chord so that you can replicate this anytime you play a minor chord. So this time, starting from my B-flat triad, I've got my pinky ready to play another couple of hammer-ons like... Na -na -na -na. I kind of uh, pentatonic phrase or pentatonic taste uh, here, which goes between the notes F and G, so 11th and 5th, B-flat C, so flat 7 and root. So I keep the... Uh, triad ringing while I do the two hammer-ons with my pinky okay but then with the pinky I also do another thing which is a slide a slide between the left C and D so again heading to the ninth and that's what allows me to do my minor nine move then because I already heard the note D the color given by the ninth into this Okay, and we are back to where we were before. Minor 11, back to minor 9 uh, again, so... Okay, so in this way you can think of this as obviously the same lick as before, but just a different start, which you can even think, this B-flat triad, as included in a E-flat major 7 chord. Okay, because E-flat major is the relative major of C minor. So these licks, particularly the second and even the third that I'm about to show you, will also work if you are in the key of E flat major, which is the same as C minor, and you're playing around an E flat major 7 chord, okay? As you can see this as included into... In fact, if I play this with an E flat in the bass, that's an E flat major 7, okay? So we were doing... Let's go to the next chord, which is still... the C minor 7, extended to 9th and 11th in second inversion, but this time let's end on a root position of a C minor 11. Like this. So all together, this second way of playing this lick goes like... Or if you don't like the arpeggio at the end, you can just strum it. Now guys, remember that you can find the tabs for all of these licks on my Patreon page where you can find tabs for all of my previous lessons together with exclusive contents and music theory analysis to follow along licks and chord progressions that you can find on this channel. So just head to the link in the description below to get access to all this on my Patreon page. And I'm very close to reach 100 patrons, which would be a huge goal for the channel. So thanks so much to all of my patrons for your support. So now let's have a look at the third and final way to play this lick. We are gonna start from another start point which is going to be this okay so three notes all together which if you like they may describe a triad but it's more of an unusual triad made by the notes F G and B flat okay now once more I'm referring all this to C minus 7 so I'm saying all this as 11 5 flat 7 okay colors between the C minor 7 chord, C minor 11, okay? Now the trick to make this really interesting is making sure that you play this starting with a slide and by the time you reach your B flat you still have the previous two notes ringing. Now you may think, well, I can play an F, G, B flat as a melody, right? F, G, B flat, yes, but if you play two notes on the same string you only have two notes ringing at the same time. I want to have three notes creating this cluster made by a second, a major second interval, F and G, and get to this. So again, it's key that we play a slide and we let these notes ring. For this reason, you will see me using quite often the hybrid picking, so pick, finger and finger on my right hand, but feel free to do it 
with three down strokes, that's equally fine, okay? So after this, there is something quite tricky, which is going to be a slide between B flat and C. Now, it's very easy to get something like this, which would be a mistake, because we are moving the G to G sharp, and we don't want that kind of dissonance, you know? So what we should be doing is keeping these two down and only sliding just about, you know, the first finger from B flat to C. Now, if you struggle with this, feel free to do this. So by the time you reach the B flat and you have the three notes ringing, you stop pressing with these two and you simply slide with the first finger. That's absolutely fine. But if you can, give it a go this way. This means by the time you reach the note C, you have another interesting voicing F, G, C, okay? Now, after this, because you are on the note C, we are gonna get into the rest of the lick. So minor nine, minor 11, back to minor nine. So, so far. Or, depending if you want to slide this while you keep the other two down, or if you can't and you want to remove the other two fingers, that's equally fine. And then we are still going to our favorite which is this voicing here, this time I'm not including the note D, I'm stopping on B flat, getting C minor 11 in second inversion, as always. But then I want that ninth, and I want it in another voicing, which is gonna be this. Okay, now I love this C minor 9, played this way, and again, even here you have the chance to play the note D on top, which I like, but if instead of using two fingers, you actually bar the ring finger down, if you like, you can then add a single G, okay? A different note on top, like... Like this. So this third and final leg goes this way. So I hope you enjoyed it guys, these are the three ways to play this lick. Make sure to check out the tabs for all of these versions on my Patreon page.